Hallelujah. Today we are going to speak about the word of God in me. I can start by saying somebody can ask himself or himself a question. Why the word of God in me? Why Because the word of the Lord is the cornerstone. The word of the Lord is the big bone. The lower word of the Lord is the skeleton that holds our salvation. The word of God is the robot that fluctuates whenever we want to pass and whenever we want to stop. The word of the Lord is the one that enables us to be able to do what we are supposed to do as Christians. So now we are going to read firstly in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 14. The Bible says the word of the Lord is near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. So that you may be able to do it. Why today I'm saying we have to speak about the word in us. If we can look at the structures of this earth. There are laws, there are bylaws, there are statutes, there are commandments. If you can go to a driving school, when you reach there, you don't drive the car according to your knowing, your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, and everything. You have to drive the car according to the laws of driving. You have to drive this car. When we have our license, most of the time, this is what we Christians do. We no longer drive our cars the way we were taught when we were at the driving school. When you were at the driving school, you will follow each and everything that they will tell you. You must turn right, you must pass right, you must indicate. Before you pass, you must indicate. Before you turn, you must show the next person that I want to turn. But how is it literally the license come at all? We move away from what we have been taught at the driving school. And we start driving the cars according to the way we understand them. This is what we Christians do. When we come before the Lord, we come as people who are desperate, people who are in need, people who want a change in their lives, people who want something to happen in their own lives. When we come to God, we will be crying, saying, God, I have this and this and this. Today I've heard about your word. Now, Father, I want you to change my life. I want to be born again. I want to be a Christian. I want to live according to your way. I want to live according to your word. I want to live according to your commandments. I want to live according to your statutes. Now, now we are born again. We are Christians. We are children of God. We are under his umbrella. We are under his arm. What is it that we can do? What is it that we can follow? So that our Christian life can be perfected. Or so that our Christian life can be what God wants us to be. So that our Christian life can stand the way God wants us to stand. So that in your Christian life you can be able to stand as a child of God. And stand the test of time. And remain standing as a child of the Most High God. There is nothing and nothing above that you can do. Except having the word of God in you. If you have the word of God in you, you can then go and say, nothing is impossible with God. Why? Because the word of God is living inside of you. Our problem is, yes, we are born again. I thank God because I've lived so much in this kind of scenario. Yes, we are born again. When we study the word of God, I study it so that when I'm seated with my friend, I'll be quoting scriptures, quoting verses to my friend, telling him about Matthew 5 verse 17, telling him about John, Job chapter what what verse what what, telling my friend about this and this and this and that. But the problem is this verse, the same verse, is not working in you. You can quote it, but it's not working in you. You can speak about it, but it's not controlling your life. You can talk about it. But it's not the one that is leading your life. Hallelujah. Now when I start to speak about the word in you. Where we have read the Bible says the word of the Lord is near you. Mohaus. 
The word of the Lord is in your mouth. The word of the Lord is in your heart. So that you may be able to do it. Okay. It means you will never be able to live Christianity when you don't have the word of God. Are you hearing me? Puluso yonaita upalela wanapapa ali nchula mudimu. Lisi iro mowena. Why? Because you won't be living according to the way that God wants us to live. You won't be doing things according to the way that God wants us to do things. You will be live, living the kind of life that you yourself are understanding and you only understand what you are doing. So the word of the Lord is near you. You have been given this word. When we are born again, there is only one thing that we can be able to follow. Milawayaba to iata, iafita. What people say comes and it goes. What people do, it comes and it goes. But the only thing that can groom us to be matured Christians, matured people who know where they are going, who know where they are heading, is when we go through the word of God. Hallelujah. Now let us go to the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. It says, Linchile la modema ali dule morina kamu shali kamuka. The first part. With all wisdom, let this word of the Lord dwell in us. Can you add the, ask the person that is close to you? Can you just tell me one verse that you know? Tuwela ngulibelali baibili uko vuchimu talenka fuli wena pili. Ako mpuche fese iti 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 ifela. Ye wena wii sivao. Not for with God nothing is impossible. No, no. Not that one guy. It's only a tip of fail. Not the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Naki hate it. The Lord is my shepherd. Eh? Can you just tell me one verse that you always hold on every day of your life? We children of God, we study the Bible, read the Bible, so that we can go and quote for the next person. That is why when, I'm not saying you must cram. Matthew 5 verse 17. No, no. What you have to do, you must have that word in you. You must have those words in you. And when those words are in you, they start to change the way you are. If I'm saying, oh, I'm blessed beyond measure. The blessings of the Lord make me rich and they don't add any sorrows. Even though you are looking poor from the outside, but inside you are rich. Why? Because you have the word of the Lord in you. When you start speaking the word of the Lord, when you start to allow the word of the Lord to manifest in your life, this is what I can tell you. There must be a change in your life. There must be a change of lifestyle in you. There must be a change of tongue in you. Pulelo is going to be fit to re. Our sahadi mula ba tu chona leka mukho no ba sahadi mula pil. Eh? You don't speak with people the way you used to speak with them. You've got a limit. Una li skalo kamu kamu kahare. Skalo sa onai is the word of God. Whenever you want to open your mouth sometimes when somebody is insulting you, you just decide to keep quiet. Not because you are stupid. Because you don't want to speak. Because there is a measure. Hallelujah. Now as children of God, when we start to adhere to what the word of the Lord says, to walk according to the word of the Lord, I love the word so much because to me, I believe the word of the Lord is the map of where I'm going. If you don't have the word of the Lord, if you are a Christian, you can never reach your destiny. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of John chapter 1 verse 1. Kya tsaba motho ka o fela wa itseba. Re itseba ka o fela nge. E reng. Eh? Ali ba ali 
Lebulel. What is he saying? Okay. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, was God, and the word was with God. And when we go down to read it, a, a, a more Bible, and God, he was with God from the beginning. And this word is our Lord Christ Jesus. And this word is the one that came down to earth to dwell with us. And this word is the one that took a stand of going to Calvary to die for us. And this word is the one that allowed me and you to be what we are and who we are today. The same word. And now the same word came to earth. Monaro verse 4. Anamogu John chapter 1. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. In this word there is life. Okay, let us take this thing Christ and put it aside. And we use the name word. Karal in Chile. Honebu pilo. Gangoma i fieli wunabu chilo. There is life in this word. And this life that has entered through this word, there is light in it. Then it means when you start to have this life, the light comes. If you are a Christian, immediately you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Something must change. Lifestyle, change. The way you talk, change. The way you walk, change. The way you answer, change. The way you dress, change. Everything about you must change. Why? Because life has entered in you. And now when that life has entered in you, the word, light, siecha, sits in karahau. Okay, now, when the light, siecha, has entered in you, definitely, your eyes must be open. Definitely, your mind must be enlightened. Definitely, your knowledge must increase. Definitely, wisdom must go up. Definitely, whatever you do must change. Definitely, whatever you think about must be things of above, not things that are below. Why? Because there is light in you. When we were still dwelling in darkness, everything that we used to do, we did them in darkness and in unbelief. Lives with sibe and ignorance. Now, when we have been born again through the word, life has come to us. That is now we will be able as Christians to say, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. The things that I do are the things that I don't want, but I do the things that Christ wants me to do. And then if you are a Christian, sometimes you have to sit down with yourself and ask yourself, but really is this light showing around the place that I'm living in? You know, in Christian life, there are people that are called self-righteous. You are contented with your own self. You are satisfied with your own self. It does not work. When you are a Christian, you can never close yourself indoors. Like what we used to do when we were in school, you know. When you know that you're going for exams, you close yourself inside the room and you start to sweat. You read like nobody's business. You write notes from your notes. You make other notes from your notes. You make other notes until that book is finished and entered into the whole of your brain. Now, when this thing has entered your brain or your head, there is one thing that is shorting, that is lacking in the life of Christians. Opila. Living according to the word. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you living according to the word? Or you are living your own kind of 
lifestyle. One day I said to you, I, last week I, I believe I said it, I grew up in a church, my father was a pastor. I thank God because God by then gave me wisdom to, to have knowledge and understanding. The person that I was staying with will give me three chapters, four chapters to study. I didn't understand. I will grumble and, and say all this kind of ways, but he will just look at me and laugh and go away from me. I was still very young, maybe 13 years or 14. When some other people were enjoying playing, I would be studying the word, you know, reading the Bible and writing notes and doing all these kind of things. But now I can tell you, you can study the word of God. You can cram it. It can stay in your head, in your heart. But to change your heart, it becomes a very difficult thing. So today I want us to inspect ourselves, ask ourselves questions. Is this word doing anything in my own life? Can you ask the person that is close to you, is this word doing something in your life? Verse 14, the word became flesh. And came and dwelt amongst us. Linchila bala malata la pila bwarari na kraste atla pila bwarari na. John testified about him. John testified about this light. John testified about the word, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now, when Christ is dwelling in us. When the word is in us, when the word now is starting to control our lives, there are some other things we have to run away from. You don't negotiate, you just run. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Irishaloka Masiya, as babes, as little children. Let us desire the word like one of the things that we have to do is to say, we have to say, let us desire the word like little babes when they, they desire fresh milk from their mothers so that they can be fed. And when we can start to do that, definitely it means we are going to start growing. Day after day, time to time, hour after hour, minute after minute, we will be growing in spirit and in stature in spirit. There is nothing that he or she depends on. The baby depends on milk. And there is nothing that a child can eat except milk from the mother or from the bottle of these days. So now, if we are so when we are children of God and we don't desire to read the word of God, there is no growing. There is no forward going. There is no progress. So there is no success. There is no breakthrough. I was praying today in the morning, you know, I, I heard God so clearly. And I say, I'm going to tell your children, those prophecies you have been prophesied, they will never come to pass. Do you know why? You don't have the word. But sometimes God is going to be a good person. We don't have roots of his word. But when you have roots, that is why after Ushu Fadiche, you won't run away with the blessings and run away from the face of God. But now because we are being blessed prematurely, and I'm going to say, 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 I'm
God wanted to encourage you. Go on. I can do it for you. Mara when I got what five thousand fella. Why the word is not there? You don't have roots. Can I take off my jacket? You know, when you have the word of God in you, nothing matters. I can let the Good Friday the other. And on the Good Friday, I did die. Why? Because we want our friends to understand. We want our fellow family members to understand. When the word of God is there in you, you don't do things so that people can understand you. You do things that so that the heavens can understand you. When you are born again, you must be stupid. When you are born again, you must allow the Spirit of God to lead you. When you are born again, you must allow the Spirit of God to talk through you, in you. When you In our days, we used to call some other people holier than thou. Hmm? Holier than thou. Even with sisters, we are not holier than thou. Come on, 1980s, 90. Christianity was tough those days, I'm telling you. Christianity of these days is good. Otherwise, we wouldn't have survived. But though it was like that, a Christian need the word of God in him or in her to survive the harsh world outside. There is a time when people speak, you keep quiet. And there is a time when people speak, you have to answer through the word. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is next to you again? Can you tell me one verse that you have? Today, read like the verse. Hey, you're hot. It's about to come Can you just tell me only one? One, one. Ian. Not the Lord is my shepherd as night. I shall not want. Ah. Kidafita sadisha na go we. Ditabing cha na go we na dula on. Some of us even, we don't know what, what, is, what is it to be a shepherd. Do you know how to be a shepherd? I don't know. But the time, hey, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, and you have never met a lion in your life. And when David was saying this, is because he met a lion, he met a bear, he met a leopard, he met all these animals in the bush. And after all, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Because when I'm leading my father's sheep, the Lord is the one who is leading me. Our Christianity these days is so empty. That is why you see we've been prophesied 2017 times in Charis Mission Maradololo. There is nothing happening. Linjia li owe. Makaling mo. I've just written a few verses here so that you may understand. Whatever that God was putting in my mind. Like Philippians chapter 2 verse 16. When you feel like you are failing in life. When you feel like things are not going your way. You are failing. You are falling. You said, say as a child of God. I'm holding on to the word of life. So that tomorrow. I want to be said that I was running in vain. Or I was laboring in vain. I was doing it in vain. 
I'm holding on to the word of life. When we come to healing, I know there is nobody who does not know this one. Hmm? Do we know the verse of healing? Eh? <laughs> no, I, I want you to learn something. I'm telling you. You know, there are some things that we are focused to. When it enters you, it dilutes the works of the devil. It takes out the arrows of the devil. It takes out those things that the devil has put in you. Sometimes you don't even need deliverance to come to the house of the Lord to be delivered. No, because when you start swallowing the word, you know, taking it inside, when the word reaches the inside of you, it works in you and it takes out everything that is not supposed to be in you. Isaiah 53. That's five. I'll speak the last sentence. By his stripes, I mean, he, he was bruised. He was beaten. He was done with this and that. By his stripes, I am healed. When you have pain, what is it that you think about? When your sickness is going on and on and on, what is it that you think about? When you see that things are not going the way you were thinking, you have been prayed for in the church, but it looks like the disease is not running away. What is it that you do? Quote the word. Speak the word in faith. Allow the word to direct your spirit. And you will then reach where God wants you to reach in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me speak about salvation. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree, on the cross of Calvary for our sake. Why are we still sinning? Why are we still going the other way around? Why are we still doing the things that we used to do before? It is because the word of the Lord is not there in us. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have the word? How do you answer to your situation? How do you answer to the things that you are meeting? What kind of answer do you give your friend when they ridicule you? What kind of answer do you give to your neighbors when they laugh at you? Answer by the word of God. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, do you have the word of God in you? Is the word of God working in you? Is the word of God working in you? Today I came here to, to the office in the morning, maybe at about 10 or 11 o'clock. So the office people were explaining to me that um, Somebody called them and, and told them the way we, we dance here in Charis, it's not holy. It's unholy. You'll think I'm joking. So I said to them, ah, I know about that one. And they said to me, Mama, how do you know? I said, okay, let me tell you. One day I was at home and my phone rang. And when my phone rang, I, I took the phone, I answered because it was an outside call. How are you? I'm fine and you? I'm okay. Can I speak to the wife of the apostle? No, the wife of the apostle is not here. She's busy. Can I take the message? Sometimes because I don't know what's awaiting me. So I said, no, I, the wife of the pastor is busy. Can I please take the message? No, I wanted to talk with to her about something very serious. I said, what is it? Tell me. I'll pass the message to, 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 to her. Not about you, next time. One day, I was jumping at the pulpit. 
and I believe that person saw whatever video in this thing of Mahua YouTube, and I was doing whatever. And the same Sunday, this Sunday, and I get to Bujiri, I take it my camera out. And I get really to know that Mahua na mo la camera out. I na mo kereke in the church. And she said to me, "You know, the wife of the pastor is pulling down his status." I said, really? I said, yes. I said, oh. What is it that she's doing? You know, she was dancing in the house of God. She was jumping like a little child. And she even took off her shoes. I said, yeah, I saw her. <laughs> and she said, what kind of a dance is it that you are doing in your church? I said, I don't know. But you know, when we are church, we become happy like that. So no, some other things that you are doing are not showing that you are Christians. I said, okay, sister, can you explain to me how we have to behave? He said to me, when we go to church, you must be humble. He said, when we go to church, you must be humble. You must be humble. You must raise your hands. You must close your eyes. And you must worship God. That's all. When you are busy worshiping God now, what is it that must happen? No. When you are busy worshiping, then the pastor will come and pray for you, speak the word, pray for you. And after that, you know, when you go home, you'll have this joy in your heart. I said, Ish. but our mother never told us like that too. Our mother said when we come to church, we must forget ourselves. And she said again, when we come to the house of God, we must dance like never before. So, no, I understand. That's why I want to talk to her. So that she may understand that what you are doing. Because yes, I understand you are worshiping God, but now this worship is like now you are doing idol worship. Mama, listen, madam, let me explain something to you. When we were still living in earth, we were worshipping idols. We were eating even things we didn't understand. But because we were told it will help us, we will take it and do it. And swallow. When you reach there, you will find a stone. The Amar never vend. You bow down to that stone, you start speaking with that stone. After that, you start speaking with that stone. And you do those things. After that, you do those things. After that, you do those things. You will dance and you will do all this kind of dance and all this mythos. And I said to him, Madam, let me tell you something. When we were still worshipping idols, we were doing everything to our own capacity and ability so that we can make the adult to be happy. So that we won't die. So that we won't fail. So that we will progress. So that we have success. So that our lives can go on and on and on. So that we don't become sick. But now we have found God, the living God, the Alpha and Omega. When you reach the house of God, you must forget who you are, Mam Apostle, Mam Fundisi. You forget whatever you think about yourself. You forget where you are coming from. You forget the car you are driving. You forget the shoes you are wearing. You forget the two pieces you are wearing. You stand before God and said, God, I'm here today. I want to show you the new style that I know. Because yesterday I was sick and today I am healed. Yesterday I couldn't breathe, but today I'm breathing. Yesterday I couldn't stand, but today I'm standing. She said, eh? I said, Madam, listen, I'm still speaking. Yesterday I couldn't stand up, but today I'm standing. Yesterday I went to sleep. I was just amazed when I woke up in the morning, I'm still breathing. I don't even understand and know who woke me up. That is why when you see us, when you reach the church, we dance like crazy people. Why? Because we know Rimodimu Richie Riko Kai. And she said to me, 
You sound like the pastor's wife. I said you are speaking to the pastor's wife. I know, madam. I said, I'm not Madam Eunice. Let me tell you now my name. My name is Chirizi Eunice Makananis. Call me Chirizi or call me Eunice, not Madam. She said, no, I just want to You know what? Already you have entered into my inner being. It's like now I'll start preaching to you through your phone. And I'm afraid your airtime will finish. Because when we come to speaking about the word, I'm excellent. When we come to speaking about what God has done. Hey, I'm excellent. You won't be able to resist me. I said, better come to South Africa and see what we are doing. Then you can be able to judge us. She said to me, where is it in the Bible that it is written that you have to dance the way you are dancing? I said, madam, I'm not good in verses, so. But I said, I'm not good in verses, so. My Bible tells me, or when David was seeing the ark of the Lord coming back, my Bible told me David danced mightily. She sent people to ask, Hanti, what's wrong with you? Because very David and Asu, which is Rokoya Bosh, I love a cohulo, Tralemam Rutatula Makai. And I said to her, The Bible says, David danced and he danced. And the wife was even ashamed of the dance that the king was dancing. Meaning, the British are going to do it. You know, we touch our yaku. I'm not much for killing shit. I'll beat it. You know, the camera will rip. That's why the Bible says she, he, she was ashamed. And she said to her husband, "What is it?" That you are doing before commoners. Eh? And David says, That is why my God rejected your father and put me in his place. That now, do you get my story, madam? I said, Yes, I understand. That so, if it was possible, when I reach to church, I can even take out my jacket and put it down and dance for the Lord. Why? Because you don't know where I'm coming from. If you can start to understand the children of God, let me tell you, you sit down by yourself. Oh my God. You sit down by yourself. You start to write down and calculate the pits that you have jumped, the accidents that have passed you, all the things that were supposed to have taken you away. So now when I sit down, I was telling my husband, most of the time, I will sit down alone and I start crying. I said, God, Father, thank you. I was supposed to have died a long time ago. You don't know. But thank God I am alive today. Now I have this directive book that God has given me. So I have to live according to it. So that what is inside me can come to the outside. So that people can know that the God that I'm serving is alive. But if you have the word, the backbone, the roots in you, you are able to hold yourself and to allow this word to minister to your soul and you keep your peace. I want us to go and pray. But before we pray, can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have the word? The word of God, do you have it? Let us sharpen our spirits with the word of God. If there is something better you can do, allow the word of God to be sown into your spirit. And when the word of God is there in your spirit, whatever you desire is coming your way. But this thing that you're crying for can never come your way if there is no root there is no foundation of the word of God. 
Because this thing, if it can come to you, it will kill you. So now God is sparing you for this beautiful moment so that this word of God can be there in you. This word of God can grow in you. This word of God can change the inside of you. This word of God can change your character. Character. How is your character? Uncle Wuchi, Shiva Tuamudi. How do you respond to things? Is determined by the person in you. When your answer to the problem that you are meeting, your answer is determined by the person in you. You know that which we are seeing from the outside of you, how relevantly. Baba Wali Kopanala, when you meet us, you just say, Eh. So I want us today to go and pray. You ask God to change the person in you. This person in you is blocking a lot of things that were supposed to have reached you by now. You were supposed to be very far. It's not that the anointing is not there, it's there. But the person in you. Now, if we can have the word of God in me, in you. I can be angry sometimes, yes. But sometimes I'll reach to a point of saying, no, no, let me keep quiet. God will answer for me. I know my God is watching. When somebody provokes you, you just say, my brother, not because you are stupid. No, you are not stupid. And you go your way. Does that not make you stupid? You are right before the eyes of God. But to the people, you are stupid. Now, if you can start behaving according to the word, of God in us. I'm telling you. Where we are supposed to go. The Englishmen say. The sky is the limit. We were supposed to have reached the far places by now. If really the word of God was in us. Most of the time we go cry. We pray. Lord change the situation of our children. Lord, bless our children. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. Mara. We ourselves, we don't have the word in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask this last question to the person? Do you have the word in you? Can we all stand up? I don't know if you were understanding what I was trying to say. How many of you were understanding what I was trying to tell you today? Can you ask the person that is next to you again, do you have the word in you? If the person says yes, ask, tell me one verse. Can we all lift our hands to God? I want us to pray. You pray for yourself. I'll also be praying for my own self. Father, allow the word of, the way your word to stay in my spirit. When I go home today, when I start studying this word, allow it to stay in every roots in my soul. 
Oh God, I bless you. Oh yeah, like I see out to lose she can visit. Can we pray? Can you pray? Pray, pray unto God. Ria Kalaba see to Kushi and the Lamban did you see? Oh yeah, Kalahashite be Kiriandolo siete. Father, allow this word to have roots in my spirit. Failed many times, Lord, when I speak. I fail many times when I act. I fail many times when I talk. I fail many times when I want to do good. I'm amazed when I do the bad that I don't want to do. Allow your spirit to minister to my spirit, Lord. Father, let your word have roots in my spirit. Allow me to live according to your word. Allow me to walk according to your word. Allow me to do things according to your word. When your word says I must run, let me run. When your word say I must sit, let me sit. When your word say I must stand, let me stand. When your word says I must do, I must do it in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, I pray today in Jesus' mighty name that the Holy Spirit will minister to my spirit tonight. And every one of us that is here in this place, in this room tonight, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are going to talk with us one by one. Father, we know where we fail. Father, we know where we cannot reach. Father, we know where we fall into pits. Father, we know, Heavenly Father, where we cannot cross the bridges when we reach. Help us today to have the word and the roots to be able to reach and to be able to cross the bridges that we are supposed to bridge. We fall and we fail many times. We appear to be holy outside, but inside we are filthy. We appear to be making it inside, inside Heavenly Father. There is nothing that is happening with us. We appear to be going somewhere, until there is no way we are going. We appear to be holding the word, until we don't have even a single thing in us. We appear to be doing it, until we are not doing it, Father. Oh, help us, Jesus. Help us, Spirit of the Lord. Father, stop our mouth. Let it not speak the things that are not worthy. Father, stop, Heavenly Father, our thinking and our ideologies so that we may not think the things that we are not supposed to think. Stop, Heavenly Father, the things that we say. For, Heavenly Father, they make us to be dirty before you. Stop, Heavenly Father, whatever we are doing so that, Heavenly Father, we can be able to reach our destinies in the name of Jesus. Allow your spirit, Lord, to minister, to minister unto us, to monitor each and every step that we walk, each and every step that we go. Forgive Heavenly Father our thinking. Forgive Heavenly lies, the lies that we speak each and every day. Forgive our broken words that we speak every day. Forgive us of our insults that we insult our neighbors, our friends, and the people that are around us each and every day. Forgive us of the wrongs that we are doing each and every day. Forgive us of the lies that we are lying against you and the spirit each and every day. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, of the trespasses that we are doing. Heavenly Father, allow the spirit, allow your word, Heavenly Father, to be the root to be the big bone of our Christianity so that we may be able to stand in glory, so that we may be able to stand in faith, so that we may be able to do whatever you want us to do. Let your truth dwell in us. Let your word dwell in us. Let this light dwell in us. Let your word dwell in us. Let Heavenly Father, your word be Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, the thing that you can be able to stand with. Allow us, Heavenly Father, to speak your word when we go it, when we go out, to speak your word in every situation that we meet, 
to speak with a word in everything that we come across each and every day, to speak your word in everything that we do, whatever we face, Heavenly Father. Let us answer in faith and through your word. I give you the praise and I give you the glory. And I worship you as the Lord God Almighty. What a mighty God we serve. What a great God we serve. And Father, I love to say today, thank you. For Father, you have been with us from the beginning. And I even trust that you are going to stand with us. Walk with us and allow us to reach where you want us to reach today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your name be praised. And let your name be worshipped. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can we raise our hands before the Lord? Let me pray. Father, I bow before you. Father, I surrender before you. Father, I say to you, there is no God like you. Father, we have sinned many times before you. Father, we have wronged you a million times. But even though it's like this, Lord, your grace is always following us. We need a change today in our lives, Lord. We need a change in our spirit, Holy Father. We need you to touch our spirits. We need you to touch our souls. We need you to touch our inner being today, Father. We are bowing down before you. We want to glorify you every day of our lives. Our deeds, our speech, the things we do, the things we say. Oh, Malakasa, Talashi, take care. Tarabaya, Sara. We kalaboshi, temendia, soturokoshi. Father, we love to follow you. We love to see your word being fulfilled in us so that we can become the light of this world that we are living in. It. Father, your word says the world, the earth is waiting for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. We want to be saying, Lord, we want you to be manifested in us. We want people to understand and to know that we are saving a living God. But change us, Lord. Change us, Lord, from inside. Change us from inside out, Lord. Change us. Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Change Charis Missionary Church children. Change us, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm tired of my situation, Lord. Change me. I believe they are also tired of their situations. Change them. So I'm standing before you tonight. Lord, we need a change. We need a change. We need a change, Lord. South Africa is waiting for us to be manifested. But we need a change. We need a change. We can never manifest when the change has not yet been done in us. We are so wrong. We are so dirty. We are so filthy. We cannot even face you. What can we say before you? What can we say, Lord? Father, it touches my heart so much. It touches my spirit. I'm crying for my children each and every day. I'm saying, Lord, change them. It was because of our ignorance. But you can change us, Lord. You can change us, Father. We are hearing you each and every day. We are hearing your word every day. But it does not do anything to our soul and our spirits. 
But today, 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 yes, today, Lord. Mm, today, Father. Today, Spirit of the Lord. Chains are broken. Chains are destroyed. Trees are starting to grow in our spirits. I'm seeing fruits of many, many kinds. Fruits that will be bearing so that we can be manifested. So that your glory may be known. So that your power ah, may be known. So that your grace may be known. <laughs> Cry, Lord. <laughs> I have never seen a God like you. Can you raise your hands before the Lord? The spirit of the Lord is in this place. Your heart can change today. There is bitterness in your spirit. But joy is coming to you right now. Sadness in your spirit. But the joy of the Lord is filling you. Disappointment in your spirit. But the breakthrough is coming your way. You have been rejected by many. But many are welcoming you today. Many are not even speaking to you. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Many don't even recognize you. But from this minute, recognition is coming your way. Recognition is coming to you. Father, I raise my hands before you as your humble servant. I know what you can do. And I know you love us so much. You are always thinking about us. Always thinking good thoughts for us. But we are not available. We are not there. Father, today, as we are raising our hands, I'm also raising my own before you. You said our name is Charis. And let me speak this name today. Lord, we are charis. Look at us. Our hands are up before in front of you. We are saying, Father, forgive us. Forgive our ignorance. Forgive, Lord, our sins. Take us to another level. Take us to where you want us to go. Will it allow your word to stay in our spirits and our souls? We will allow you to minister to us each and every day. And you said when we come to you and when we listen to you, you will heal our land. You will heal us. You will heal us. I love you, Jesus. I love you so much. I don't even know what to say, Lord. All I can say is thank you, Daddy. Thank you for saving us, all of us here. Thank you for allowing your grace to reach us. Thank you for allowing your grace to reach even me, even them, even that one and that one. And that one over there. 
Thank you for allowing this grace to reach us. Let your word be our backbone as from today. And I know if we do that, your spirit will abide in us. And your presence will always be present in our presence. And Holy Spirit, guide us. Don't leave us. Stay with us. Stay, I pray. Stay, stay. Stay with us. Stay and stay with us. I know, Lord, when you say things, they come to pass. I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Disappointments are going. Failure going. Pride running away. Oh, yeah. Your hand upon our lives, Lord. Your spirit cleaning our spirits. Disease is running away. Problems in our house is running away. Your word occupying each and every space in us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for everything. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Can we clap our hands for the Lord? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh. From today, can we allow the word of God to be our compass? There are so many things that are hanging in the air. Let me say so. Because there is no ground to land. So many things that are somewhere because the ground has not been cultivated and fertilized. The landing strip has not yet been prepared. Those things cannot land. Can we prepare our lives with the word of God? So that whatever that God wants to bring in our life can then be able to land in the right place. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands for the Lord?